Rade Rade, today is Saturday, 16th March, 2024. Here we are to present you this recap video of today's Bhagavad Gita study session, continuing along our journey for chapter eight, where we had our usual recap quiz for the prior content and a few new verses covered in today's session. Here along with me is Mummy. Radhe Radhe. As you'll now see on the screen, we covered chapter 8, verses 19, 20, and 21 after the recap quiz that was for last time's content on chapter 8, verses 17 and 18. As always, details are in the description below. If you look at the links below in the description for the video, and of course, go to the community portal page, go through the prior content, and familiarize yourself with everything. Moving ahead, we'll now get started with chapter 8, verse 19. Bhut grama sa evayam, bhutva bhutva praliyate, ratra yaga meva shafpartha, prabhavatya haraga me. So chapter 8 verse 19, the catchphrase here is, again, Brahma's cosmic day. A couple of verses ago, I think maybe chapter 8, verse 17, we had the catchphrase Brahma's Day, where we were introduced to all the different terms for the numbers and the duration associated with the day of Brahma, the life, and so on. Now, a couple of verses later, we get more details on Brahma's cosmic day and, of course, about pralaya, the different kinds of dissolution. So again, Brahma's cosmic day, as we mentioned in class, the acronym here happens to be ABCD, so that might be helpful for remembering. In this verse, in the commentary, uh, first in the translation, Sri Krishna tells Arjun that all these living beings, the multitudes of them, they repeatedly take birth. That is with the advent or start of Brahma's day that we saw previously. And then with the fall of Brahma's night, the start of the night, which is the same span in length as the day, then they are reabsorbed. They go back into that unmanifest source. And then again, with the next cosmic day's beginning, they emerge again, they emanate. So to help explain that, Swamiji introduces us to four different pralays or dissolutions. We talked about them. Nitya pralay is the one when you are in deep sleep. No dreams, consciousness is dissociated from our day-to-day -day thoughts and activities. So that is a regular daily occurrence in general. Nemitic pralay, the second one, we saw that last time. We saw a few more details today. This is also known as Brahma Pralay, or in English, a partial dissolution, because the worlds that are up to and or including Maharlok, at least Bhu, Bhuva, and Swaha, these are the ones that definitely go through dissolution. Maharlok, not necessarily dissolution, but the beings from there will elevate to the next, the Jana Lok. And therefore, at the end of Brahma's day, you see this partial dissolution where then what happens to the souls is that in these three worlds or more, the souls then become unmanifest. There is this suspended animation we had discussed previously, and they go into the body of Vishnu. When that next day of Brahma starts, the activity of creation comes up again, then these living beings are given bodies according to their past karmas. The big one, third, Mahapralaya, we talked about that as the dissolution of the entire universe. So all the abodes, all 14 material worlds, up to and including Satyalok, Brahma's abode, all these go through the process of dissolution. So they become, you know, that again, state of suspended anim animation for the souls. It's just this unmanifest energy. Everything now residing in the body of Mahavishnu. We talked about the three different bodies in our context, Stool Sharir, gross body, Sukshma Sharir, subtle body, and Karan Sharir, the causal body. In this process, the gross and the subtle bodies, they go through the dissolution process, but the causal body always remains. That's the one that has the account of our karmas from endless lifetimes and our sanskars. And with that, when the next process of creation happens, in this case, after Mahapralaya, there will, there will be a new Brahma. So a new process of creation, and when we get a body, that's going to be based on the decisions that come through from the causal body, based on how our karmas and sanskars played out and continue further. Final one, which is specific to us as individual souls, is Atyantik Pralay. 
So this is when we finally get that grace of God realization, the yoga, that union that we are seeking. So then this is dissolution. It is also liberation from the bonds of Maya. And then, of course, that soul is no longer tied to Maya, which otherwise it was. A quick reminder also is we mentioned in class, chapter 2, verse 28. Please do revisit that. That is where we had first talked about the gross body, the subtle body, and the causal body, the elements that make up each of them, and then connected that to today's content. Next, we're going to see chapter 8, verse 20. Paras tasmatu pavo nyo vyakto vyakta sanatana ha yasa sarveshu bhuteshu nashatya suna vinashyati. Chapter 8, verse 20. The catchphrase here is ceaseless dimension at least in two different ways. One is, this is now we being introduced to a dimension that never ceases to exist, so it's always there. Also, in terms of size and magnitude, it just keeps going on and on, infinitely expansive, so ceaseless dimension. In chapter 8, verse 20, very short uh, paragraph of commentary, we first see in the translation that Sri Krishna explicitly states that transcendental to or beyond this manifest and unmanifest creation there is yet another unmanifest eternal dimension. We'll see in the next verse what that is, how he defines or describes it, but you all probably get a sense of it. And this realm is something that never ceases, even when all the material worlds cease to exist. So this is moving on now from the material world into the spiritual dimension. Swamiji briefly tells us that that is, of course, created by the spiritual Yogmaya energy of God, we had talked about that at length in chapter 7 and elsewhere. And in a later chapter and verse of the Bhagavad Gita, we'll see what proportion of God's entire creation this spiritual dimension constitutes. Finally, we have chapter 8, verse 21. Avyaktokshara ityuktaha tamahuf paramam gatim Yam prapyana nivartante tadhama paramamama. So, chapter 8, verse 21, again in the catchphrase, use of the word dimension, but here now as a question one dimensional goal, two things to ponder about, or at least acknowledge. Of course, that spiritual dimension is not one dimension, expansive, right? Multiple dimensions. But also for us as a question to reflect upon is that what is our one-dimensional goal? Our linear goal certainly ought to be just to seek that yoga and union with God. So in chapter 8 verse 21's commentary, we first, of course, in the translation learn from Sri Krishna that he now calls that unmanifest dimension, the one that is transcendental to the material dimensions, that is his supreme goal. That is our supreme goal. It is his supreme abode. And Sri Krishna states that upon reaching it, one never returns to this mortal world. In the commentary, we are introduced to a new term, paravyom. So that is the divine sky of the re spiritual realm, Swamiji tells us. And then we saw different names for all these different forms and abodes of God. Golok for the abode of Sri Krishna. That is the one full of cows, Golok. Saket Lok, Saket being another term or word or an appellation for Ayodhya. So that is Saket Lok, the abode of Sri Ram. We have Vaikunt Lok, the abode of Vishnu or Narayan. Vaikunt is the heaven of Vishnu and also a name for Vishnu. And then more self-explanatory, we have Shiv Lok, the abode of Sadashiv or our Mahashambhu. And then Devi Lok, the abode of Mother Durga. The takeaway is, as Swamiji tells us, that we're always, of course, upon reaching any of these abodes, we are with the Supreme Lord. It is based on whatever form we were attached to or meditated upon during our material spiritual journeys. But in all of them, the common thing is we shall be continuing our seva and its eternal divine seva for and with the Lord. And of course, with the Lord's eternal associates. So you get a divine body, 
and you participate in all those divine pastimes, all for the pleasure of the Lord. Homi, I'll pass it over to you. Thank you, Gavin, and explained very well. So let's look at uh, some important words. So in verse number 19, we will look at the word avashaha. Avashaha, it's a very important word in this verse. It means helpless. So now what is happening? What we learned in these verses that nothing is ever created or destroyed. You know, it just goes into the suspended state. Forms only change, you know. Those who take, those who die, they take birth in a different form. There are 8.4 million species and they, the number remains the same. So it is like a movie. The movie ends, the reel is rewound and the movie begins again, all over again. Now the word avasha is so important. It shows, Krishna says that all these forms, they are helplessly stuck into this cycle of birth and rebirth. That is the wheel of this samsara. So to come out of this cycle, we need to actively pursue the path of spirituality. Okay. And we learned that um, in these um, dissolution, the Sthul Shreer and Sukshma Shreer are gone. The gross body and the subtle body, they are gone. Only the causal body, Karan Shreer is left. Okay, And that those are our sanskars and tendencies. So if we start spirituality, whatever we have level we have reached, in the next uh, birth, we will start from that level only. So that is why it's a very big takeaway that we should continue on this path of spirituality. And um, in the class, we discussed the gross, five gross elements, earth, water, air, fire, space, five gyanendriyas, you know, that knowledge um, uh, organs, that means from where we uh, perceive this world, ear, skin, eyes, tongue, and nose, and then five karmendriyas, the working organs, that is mouth, feet, hands, anus, and genitals. And then we have panchvayu, pranvayu, or five life years. Those are the pranvayu, apanvayu, uh, vyanvayu, udanvayu, and samanvayu. And in the class, we explained them in detail. Now, verse number 20, the important word is vinashyati. Vinashyati means that is annihilated. So, what is happening? Krishna is saying that the dissolution happens. It is only that light that is the eternal unmanifest dimension of God. The way we explained with the example of uh, a reel and picture movie screen. So there is that analogy. You see the characters on the screen, but those are impermanent or oh, those. Okay. So we cannot identify with them. But what we see that light, without that light, we cannot see that movie. So similarly, we have to understand that there is that something that transcends time and space that is the unmanifest eternal dimension of God. Now verse 21, again let's learn the word Aksharaha. Aksharaha, again we have learned it earlier, it means imperishable. Hmm. So it says that that eternal unmanifest remains unaffected by the day and night of Lord Brahma. And that is our supreme goal. So we all want to make that our supreme goal. And that is the divine sky of spiritual realm. Para, para, vyom. Para means divine, vyom means sky. Hmm? And then it that, that sky, that divine sky, para, vyom, that contains all the lokas of different forms of God. So whoever you worship, 
you make it as your supreme goal and then cut asunder all the bondages of Maya by moving very aggressively on the path of spirituality and hope to reach one of those lokas. Okay, it could be Golok, Saket Lok, Vakunt Lok, Shiv Lok, or Devi Lok, and be the participant of the eternal pastimes of Supreme Lord. With that, over to you, Gagan. Yeah, thank you, Mommy. And I realized I did not bring up the flyer during class, but certainly should do so here. So the question to ponder about was, you're on a journey, yet not desiring to reach Earth. Which plane, in double quotes, are you on? Bit of a trick question, obviously, or the image might mislead you. But here now we have learned through today's verses, chapter 8, verses 19, 20, and 21, we're talking about the transcendental plane, the plane of existence not what is suggested visually on the flyer directly. So something for everyone to capture and think about. We certainly seek to go to that spiritual dimension, that spiritual realm, one of the abodes of the Supreme Lord. So With Karen, that, we yeah. can be on the plane of spirituality. Certainly true as well. And try to reach one of the mm -hmm. abodes of God. Golok or Saket Lok or Vaikunt Lok or Shiv Lok or Durga Lok huh? on the plane of spirituality. Absolutely true. And in fact, I think I've read um, in you know Vaikunt Lok at least, and I'm sure even in the others, there are all these luxurious emerald, gold, etc. planes and they travel in them. So certainly very, very true. So it makes sense both ways. Yep. Lots to ponder about then. So continue the journeys individually and collectively. We look forward to seeing you all next Saturday. That will be 23rd March, 2024. Same time, 11 a.m. Central Daylight Time in the U.S. and 9.30 p.m. the new time for India. Thank you so much. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe.